here is the next longer podcast and it's all about like hostile brothers or brothers and sisters it's basically it's where we have a little conflict in our lives and a process that we're going to talk about in here so be warned there is a process in here so have a listen up to that and if you've got things that you need to do it's going to take your attention then come back but there's a little process in here to help you resolve little conflicts and it's really quite wonderful I think you'll really enjoy it I enjoy immensely doing this and a very similar process they're so powerful in a wonderful good way so if that gets your curiosity just turn up a little bit have a listen after this Hey, my friends, welcome. This is the Personal Development Unplugged podcast. What's it all about? Well, it's about improving ourselves, obviously, personal development. It's with me, Paul Clough. Who am I? Well, I'm Paul, Paul Clough. I just said that. But what I do and have skills at or in is hypnosis, NLP, timeline therapy, and lots of other stuff. I teach the blooming stuff to everyone I can. Been doing it for years. But the thing about this podcast is it's sharing things that just work, deconstructing the things that are really difficult or made to appear difficult by people making them difficult. Maybe they want to keep them secret. I don't know. But we're going to deconstruct those type of things so we can use them for ourselves and, as I say, self-develop, get better in life, get our goals, our dreams, improve anything you want. The thing is, it's not just listening. There's things to do, because if you're just knowing this stuff, that's okay. But knowledge without doing, not really worth it, is it? So do, if you're listening, do, try, do the things that we we go through, the processes, the hypnosis tracks, because when you put the effort in, the return on your investment will be enormous. Anyway, that's what we do here. Warning. 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 You are entering into the unplugged mind of Paul Clough. Clough. Too late. Personal Development Unplugged. Hi guys, how's it going today? How's it going? Welcome back to, well, the Personal Development Unplugged podcast with me, Paul Clough. And what are we going to talk about today? Well, here's the thing. I've called this this episode, Hostile Brothers, and it could be Hostile Sisters, could be Hostile Brothers and Sisters, it could be Hostile Anything, and Hostile doesn't necessarily mean to be really hostile. So, having made that perfectly clear, here's a question to you. Here's the thing, have you ever felt a bit like you're being pushed and pulled at the same time around maybe a decision or there's something you really want to do? It's like on the one hand, I really want to do this, but uh, on the other hand, I'm not sure. It's like pulling me back. There's a part of me that really wants to do something. Have you ever said that? There's a part of me that really wants to do do this particular thing. Or there's a part of me holding me back. Have you heard of that? Have you felt it? I think we all have, haven't we? And that's a strange thing, because we... We talk in this particular way as if there is a physical part. And there maybe, maybe there is. Maybe there's a part of us within our unconscious mind that's really trying to do something for us. Another part of us trying to do something else for us. And they're, they're just like knocking horns together, their heads together or fists or whatever. And they're just clashing. There's just things not happening. There's a big conflict going on. And it doesn't have to be big, 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 big conflict. But it's big conflict in relation to that particular thing. You see, around this type of area, if I've got a client, I'd be talking to them a little bit like this. And I'd get a, I used to get a piece of paper out and I'd draw a little circle in the middle. And I'd say, but just before that, I'd get a, a plain piece of paper. And I'd say, do you know what? I reckon, that's what I reckon. I reckon when we come into this world, We have this wonderful, clean slate, like this clean piece of paper. That's like our unconscious mind. It's going to be that sponge, isn't it? And we're here to have a good time. We're here to learn, to, if you're really into it, you know, to follow your mission, have a vision, and have a reason for being here, but to do good things. That's what I believe. 
and I draw a straight line going across the top of the page. That's how we do it. Clean, we learn, and we do things. But I say, sometimes, and I turn over the page, and I've got this circle in the middle, I say, sometimes, something happens. I don't know when. Sometimes it's quite young in life. But something happens, and it doesn't have to be traumatic in a traumatic way that if you thought about it now in your adult or through your adult eyes and your adult experience you go well that's not traumatic but to a little you it would have been a little bit traumatic or it could have been for your unconscious mind going I don't don't like this feeling so something happens and it's like as if a part of you says do you know what I'm going to control this I'm going to take responsibility for this thing. I don't like this feeling, so I'm going to set up a way of being, a behavior that will stop it happening. So say, for example, you know, you, you'd done something and it got embarrassing and you didn't like that feeling of embarrassment. So you, this part of you says, I don't want you to go through that embarrassment again. So I'm going to do something. I'm going to give you maybe a little feeling of fear, just a little bit and a little belief of just a little bit of well, I'm not really good enough, or something like that. Or it could be a little bit of anxiety, or a little bit of anything. Sort of negative, but enough to stop you, that little you, that younger you, doing that thing again. And therefore, protecting you. Protecting you from that maybe feeling of being silly, you know, being embarrassed. But the thing is, it keeps doing it. And I don't know about you, but you see, what tends to happen is it gets bigger. It's like a snowball coming down a hill. It gets bigger and bigger. Instead of changing with all your wonderful experience, all your thoughts, everything you've learned, this little part carries on doing the same thing because it worked back then. So it just does it a little bit more intense and a little bit more intense than that. And it just keeps intensifying that feeling, doing the same thing, maybe even adding in a few more things, a few more thoughts, pictures in your mind, just to really give you a bit more of the eebie-jeebies to stop you doing it. But the thing is, it's not really working, is it? Because then what I say, if you look outside that circle for the rest of the page, when you're living the rest of your life, you don't feel that way, do you? You're getting on enjoying life. So... If what this part is doing is now no, no longer working, what's going to happen? Because it's not working, is it? Because what happens is, and, and the other thing I say is, you know, if we draw a little line going towards that circle, it's like you wake up in the morning and you wake up and you go, do you know what? I'm not going to get that feeling today because I'm going to be okay. I'm not going to be embarrassed in front of my boss or this or whatever. Or I'm not frightened or anxious because sometimes it just changes a little bit, gets a little bit more out of control. And then, boom, something happens, something triggers it off, and you go back into that old set of behaviours, that old bit of programming. And then, it seems to peter away. But then a little bit later in the day, something might trigger it off again. And it's just that repeating cycle. And I say to the clients, well, you know, is that you? coming, Switching on, off, on, off, as if this part of me doesn't want that. I go, yeah. So what would happen then? If everything on the outside is where everything is good, comfortable, and feeling safe, what's going to happen to that part? Especially when it knows what it's doing is no longer working. Because if you think about it, if it doesn't feel good, it's not working, is it? Because is there a better way? Would there be better strategies than feeling anxious, frightened, uh, wh whatever you feel? With all those pictures in mind, would there be a better way to approach that? A better set of behaviours, a better emotions. Oh, sorry, I say that again. A better set of emotions. Would there be a better way? So, of course, there would be. Better positive beliefs would help, wouldn't it? The beliefs you tend to have when you're not in that state. Well, yeah. What would have to happen? And when we think, and and this is really quite new to the client, they go, well, obviously, if the part that's running this knows it isn't doing it properly and knows it has to change and it knows that everything it's not doing is like the solution which is on the outside it's got to go poof, take on everything from the outside and let go of everything on the inside which is effectively like imploding exploding everything just disappearing a full integration integrating of all the resources on the outside and letting go and just using what is necessary 
And you see, having got that, he just felt, yeah, that, that seems what's happening. So then I'll say, do you want to do something a little bit weird? But it's not weird in a weird way. It's weird in a wonderful way. You curious? What would your answer be to that? So especially when we're talking about changing. Changing this behavior. That's all it is. It's a behavior. It's uh, something is triggering these things for a wonderful positive intention. That part of you is trying to keep you safe from that maybe embarrassment and things like that. But it's no longer doing it in the most appropriate way. It's not accessing all the wisdom that you have right now, the experiences you have right now. So wouldn't it be nice if we got that part to integrate and use all the stuff? And in fact, to some extent, I have to say that parts don't work because parts will always, in some ways, have a conflict with another part. So what we want is them to integrate back into the whole because the whole is greater than the sum of the parts, isn't it? We know that. But wouldn't it be weird, in a wonderful way, to do a little process around this? And they go, yeah. I don't know what you're going to do, Paul, but I'm up for it. And you see, maybe we could talk to that part and we could also talk to the rest of you or the the particular part because sometimes it's like a an opposing part the opposite opposite of the side of the coin as it were the part that wants something different maybe wants what you want but you want that safety don't you because i said if you could have that safety but have all the rest of your resources wouldn't that be great well, i wouldn't have the problem paul that belief was to go, that feeling was to go, and those old behaviours to go, and I was to access all that other stuff, the good stuff, I'd still be safe, and I wouldn't be, I wouldn't get embarrassed, because I'd be actually accessing all the stuff. It's actually the embarrassment I'm feeling not doing it is more embarrassing and more fearful. So then I would say, right. And this is where, if you want to, we're just going to talk through this. But as I talk through this, just remember, if you have anything to do, if anything requires your your attention, come back to this. Because while I explain it, what tends to happen is that you're going to probably think about it in a different way. Think about your issue in a, in a way, in a different way. And maybe just resolve it. But to do that, you might be just going inside a bit. And I want you to be safe. It might, you, you might even find your eyes closed. So, if you have something which requires your attention, certainly if you're driving or, as they say, operating, mach operating machinery, come back. Come back to this when you're sitting at home, quiet, and just put the old earbuds in or your earphones in and just come back to this point. But if you're okay, and it is okay, because remember, I'm a therapist, but not your therapist, but we're just going to see, see what happens. because. We're just going to take that old feeling and speak to the part. Now, how could you do that, I wonder? Well, I do it in a particular way, and uh, myself and my two sons have developed a really powerful process on a one-to-one -one basis that we do with clients. But I can do that with you, but in a different way. A different way that we can do just talking. Just telling a story, as it were. Having a conversation. So if you were to relax just a bit, just to relax. And first of all, you know, maybe just bring to mind that old feeling. That old feeling that, yeah, I want to do that, but something's stopping me as if I get that old feeling, that little bit of worriedness, a bit of anxiety. Maybe a little bit of, mm, don't want to be embarrassed or, you know, I feel held back about talking to my boss. Just pick a nice, simple little issue you have. Five out of ten at the most. But something, maybe it's just your, you know, you, you get a little bit, a bit nervous talking to people. Maybe it's a particular person or it's something you want to do and you really want to do it, but there's something holding you back. You can get one of those, can't you? And just notice where the feeling is. And set your intention. So I want you to set your intention and set your state. So what state would be a good state to have? Well, to me, it might be just be curiosity. I'm just curious about this. Curious what Cluffy's going to do and curious of what it'd be like to let go of this feeling. 
and to be different. And in fact, my intention is to be different, to access more, more appropriate behaviours and beliefs and emotions so I can be safe. Because I want to keep the intention of my unconscious mind, that part of me that wants to try to keep me safe from things, but to find it in a better way. And as you do that, you might bring to mind that feeling. Maybe you'll even understand what you believe about yourself when you think about the context when you have that feeling, that negative feeling. Maybe it's I'm not good enough or I can't do this or they'll find me out, that type of thing. And if you would, and if you wanted to, you could just close your eyes. You can do your eyes open, but sometimes it's a bit distracting. And take a breath. And now here's the thing. Wouldn't it be interesting, a little bit weird, if we were to have an image, have an image appear in our imagination of that part? Now maybe one way of doing it is imagine a mirror and in fact, two mirrors in front of you. And in the first mirror, the one on that side, you see a reflection of yourself. Or it could be an image of what you consider that part to be. Remember, it's a good part. It's a part that's trying to do its best for you. It's just using inappropriate ways anymore. But it really is striving to do its best. But if you see an image of yourself, and then notice that image of you can just step out of that mirror and this is the part the part that's running this old program this old way of being for such a long time and it's trying to do its best for you you know that so in fact you can say to yourself over there thank you thank you for doing your best for me for trying to keep me safe that's awesome thank you But just realise, maybe you just realise that what you're doing for me, well, it's no longer working, is it? Because it doesn't feel safe. And that's where the conflict comes in. You're trying to keep me safe by making me feel unsafe. Which is the complete opposite that you want for me. But you can just ask that part. I know you want to keep me safe. But just consider this. What do you want for me? By keeping me safe, what do you want for me? What will that get me that's even more important? And just notice what comes to mind. What would that safety allow you to be, feel, when you know if you had safety in everything you could do, how would that be for you? And probably it'll just be an intuition, or you might even get that part of you, that reflection that stepped out of the mirror just say to you yeah I want this for you because when I have you safe this is what I want for you and then you say oh that's awesome but if I had that what would that mean to me what would that allow me to be do and have how good would that be and especially how would it make me feel and let that part think well I keep you safe I'm keeping you there and that would make me feel oh And then just ask, well, what would happen if I had all of that, that safety, those other two, and more? How would that allow me to be? And we're getting to a lovely high high level. And you say, let me feel what it would feel when I'm totally safe with all those other qualities. What would that feel like? And notice how good that feeling is. And notice... And I want that part of you, that that reflection, the part of you that's taken responsibility for keeping you safe. Just to notice when you have this feeling, this high feeling, how safe you'd really be. Because you'd be able to access all the things you need. And just let it notice how having this state, this feeling, would colour and enrich all those lower states and that safety. But the thing is, sometimes we don't have all the pieces. 
and this part of you doesn't have all the pieces to allow this all to happen. But it wants it for you now. It wants this wonderful, good feeling for you. And it can now, while we talk to that other part of you, the part of you that's in conflict with this, this part can just reflect how, by letting go of that old feeling, how good it would be to let it go and have this wonderful high state in the world, in the real world. And then notice on that other mirror, another reflection of you stepping out. And this is the other part of you, the other part that wants something for you, but is, is like been in conflict with that part over there, but probably didn't realize that that part over there really wanted you to be, be safe. And it didn't realize it wanted those steps, those other wonderful qualities and that really good feeling. It didn't realize that. It just realized that it didn't want that old feeling, the old beliefs, the old ways, because it wasn't working. But just notice you could ask that part. In fact, thank it for being here. Thank it for serving you. Just as long as the other part been serving you so long to try to keep you, I guess, safe as well. But in a different way. And just ask. What do you really want for me? How do you really want me to feel? And this part seems to, in my experience, just want wonderful things for you. And just say, when you have that wonderful thing, what, what would that wonderful thing allow me to feel, be and do? And when you have that, consider what that would allow me to do. And you don't have to get the answers because it's that part of you that's getting the answers. And just notice. You see, it's gonna, you're going to notice that part of you over there is going to realize. Realize what it wants. The highest wonderful feeling is the same as the other part. They both want that wonderful feeling. But when they look at each other, if they were just to turn in your mind's eye to look at each other, and they notice they want the same thing, but they'll also notice that they have different skills, different emotions that when put together, when they work together, that wonderful feeling is totally possible. In fact, it is and will be that would be there. The only thing that has to happen, two things. One is that first part has to let go of the things in conflict. Well, if they're not working, it can let that go now. Especially as they know, both of them know, when they work together with all that wonderful energy, instead of ha having that energy locking horns, they actually work together. Wow. Because we know when we're in the flow, energy just, whoa, is so much there. It's easy to do the good stuff. And just notice, as they notice, that if they were to work together, and that first part was to let go of the old ways, the old inappropriate ways, the ways that aren't working, they would both get what they want for you, which would be wonderful. Notice how they begin to walk together. And in fact, they begin to merge, and so do the mirrors behind them merge into one mirror. And as they merge together, that reflection of you steps back into the mirror to be whole, to be one, because that's what we want, isn't it? And then just notice how that mirror and you effectively become one. And just notice how that feels. But more importantly now, you see, as you notice that these two parts that have been fighting, now they're going to work together. And they can both do it with every bit of safety, but access everything that you need when you need it to keep you safe and have this wonderful feeling. So when I'm talking to my client, we'll go through that type of process. But then I'd say, what would it be like when they work together? What would it be like to get what you want without that old feeling and feeling fully protected, 
totally safe. What would that be like if you had all those wonderful qualities? Wow. What would that be like? And if you consider that, what would it be like to have all those qualities access, all wonderful empowering beliefs, positive empowering beliefs, have wonderful positive emotions and access to all the most appropriate positive healthy behaviors that will allow you to be safe and get the things that you want to perform at your best to be able to deal with those things that in the past gave you problems but now how would it be now i mean what would happen if you were to imagine just going out into the future a little bit and noticing if something was to happen like an issue that in the past you acted in the old way just notice having these two parts work together and accessing all that you ever needed just notice going through that event not that it's going to happen in the future but if it did notice how easy and how comfortable how aligned you are how that wonderful core state permeates every cell every fiber of you and then you might just consider this. What would it be like if this wonderful way of being was to now generalize? Generalize into different contexts, different areas of your life. How would that be positive? How would that be? What would that allow you to do? How would your dreams be your dreams? How big would they be? How quick would they come? And just maybe get a sense of being grateful for it. And just notice. Maybe you'll imagine something else. Another dream, another thing. And how well you can go through that. Mm. Anyway, anyway, that's a bit like I'd talk to my client. And how I'd guide them through that process. And get them to notice what it's like. And how right it is to make those changes now. Hmm. And then go and do the stuff. You see, the big thing about this is, and this is where so many other approaches don't quite get it, don't quite get the result, is because we've kept the positive intentions or the positive intention from your unconscious mind. We haven't pushed it away. We haven't tried to enforce anything. We've said we want that positive intention of keeping you safe in this particular context keep you safe from whatever negative emotion and we've given the choice to your unconscious mind to choose a better way and when your unconscious mind understands there's a conflict and can choose a better way and we guide it to choose a better way boom and all you have to do is just keep imagining different scenarios doing it the way you want it to be and notice every time you do that if you were to be in that that event how safe you'd be how not just safe, how good you'd feel. Wouldn't that be awesome? And all it is is just having a little bit of integration and an understanding that those two parts really wanted the best for you. Now, this is all very woo-woo-la-la-ish, other than it seems to work. Because we do have, on the one hand, I want to do this, and on the other, I don't. Or there's a part of me. We say it. Where does that saying come from? Now, obviously, if you've got an issue which is a bit bigger than that, one-to-one, one-to-one therapy. Go seek it out. There's plenty of good therapists around. I've got a, a podcast episode way back. I can't remember what it is, but it's what to look for in a good therapist or good therapy. It includes hypnosis and things like that, NLP, because that's what I do, and that's my, my only experience. I can't give you experiences of what I don't know. But if you do... As we've said on other other episodes, make yourself known. Go find it. It's not that expensive. It doesn't have to take a long time. I've ranted on that for blooming ages and ages and ages. But this is just a little way, just a little thing on a little thing, just to show you things can change easily, effortlessly, and really quickly. And it's only down to the power of your imagination-ish. It's also getting your unconscious mind to understand that we are not fighting against it. We're taking responsibility to be thankful and understanding. And in that way, we can appreciate 
all the things that your unconscious mind does for you. He's your best friend, for goodness sake. Always striving to be and keep you safe and do the best for you. Sometimes he just misses out a little bit of your experiences and a little bit of all the skills and things that you have, all your knowledge, your wisdom. So all we're doing is just redirecting them, redirecting that unconscious mind to get there and to notice what wants you, you want it to, whatever that meant. Or what you want, wants you to. We just have to get the right resources firing at the same time. It's like those neural pathways. Get them to fire together, they'll wire together. They won't clash. And this is getting those neural pathways to fire together. And by imagining it out there, you're getting an understanding of what you want to make it even better. But also to make sure it is what you want, how you want to be. That's all. And once you do that, Bob's your auntie and things like that. But I say, if you have any type of issues, this is the thing to do. Get one-to-one. Go back through those hypnosis tracks. You know, sign up to the hypnosis tracks. And we're going to be doing some stuff with that as well. There's, there's going to be something that's happening. I can't say it yet because I haven't done it yet. I did give it a little mention on the last little newsletter. What? You didn't get the newsletter? That means you didn't sign up to the hypnosis tracks. Where do you get them from? paulcloughonline.com forward slash podcast. Get access to all those hypnosis tracks you get, then a newsletter, but also you'll get this bit of information that I can't tell you about now, but will be beneficial to you. And it gives you the opportunity to email me, because you can email me anyway. Feedback at personaldevelopmentunplugged.com. Send me your thoughts, you know, just then send me what you'd like to achieve. Maybe what you think is holding you back. Maybe there's an emotion that you'd like to change. And just let me know. Don't need a lot of information. Just send me a little bit. How do you feel now? And how do you want to feel? That's it, really. And let's see what we can come up with in maybe a little process or just a reframe or just because sometimes just it's the little thing, the simple little thing can make the most massive difference. And then, as we said before, that massive difference to you right then generalizes into every area of your life. So something good happens here and good happens everywhere. Because when you get confident, if you say for an example, if you get confident in one particular area of your life, you're going to get more confident in other areas, aren't you? If you get a feeling of, well, I'm in control in this area of my life, you get to feel more in control in other areas. It just happens that way. It's what happens when we have a little fear. It generalizes into other areas and we get a little bit fearful about every blooming thing. That's the, that's just a process. It's not good or bad because we can use it to generalize good stuff into other areas and every area of our life. Power of your imagination. Imagineering. I hope you enjoyed that. Have a good stand up, shake around and have a think. Maybe listen to it again. Make a few notes. Just have a think. Amuse. Enjoy. Have more fun than you can stand. And let me know. Let me know those little golden nuggets that you may have winkled out, seen. Maybe you saw a little shining and then you went back and dug it up. I'd love to hear from you. Anyway, until the next time, my friend. Enjoy every heartbeat. Hey, before you go, I've got a little bit of housekeeping, just a little, about three or four little things I want to tell you. Now, you've just listened to this episode of the podcast, and if you enjoyed that process or you think it would be really beneficial to have it as a separate, standalone hypnosis track, do get in touch with me. If enough people request it, then I'll produce it and we'll we'll, we'll have that on well, with all the other hypnosis tracks at paulcloughonline.com forward slash podcast. And talking about paulcloughonline.com, the front sheet or the index page or whatever you call it, that that blooming first page. If you go there now, paulcloughonline.com, you'll see that I've put up a free hypnosis track for you. It's all about reducing your anxiety. Say that again, Paul. It's all about reducing your anxiety. 
Just go there, click on it, and off you toddle, reducing that anxiety. And penultimately, that's the one from the end, that is, how about have you listened to that podcast where I talked about who do you think you're fooling? That's right. It's podcast hashtag 80. It's just a little reminder that I'm starting to do now for either newcomers or people, well, it's a long time ago. Hashtag 80. It's a lovely, longer podcast. Who do you think you're fooling? Here's the intro. And if you like it, well, you'll go back there and find it and have a look through the back catalogue. Here's your, your quick heads up for today's podcast. And it's all about the reasons I give to myself and the reasons why I don't do stuff. And when it comes down to it, they're all BS because they're just excuses. And I'm sure when you listen, you'll find similar things in your life. And then I'll go on to, well, I go on quite a bit actually, but I'll go on to how we can change that so we take full responsibility and stop living on the effect side of life. So if that interests you, dive in. Okay, I'll see you on the other side. And lastly, hey, so before you go, I just want to say a big thank you because so many of you are now sharing this podcast, the Personal Development Unplugged podcast, and it is making a difference. I know it is, but please don't stop. Please keep paying it forward. Share it to everyone you know. Share what you learned from here and tell them where you got it from. In that way, we'll be making a difference. And also, if you haven't subscribed, please do so. Look on that player of choice, that platform that you listen on, whether it's CastBox, uh, Google Play, iTunes, or whatever it is. Please look for that subscribe button, if you could, because that makes so much of a difference too. It helps people find this little old thing that we're doing and will make a difference to you, them, and this little old planet Earth. And it make me feel bloody good too. So please do that. And do remember, there is free hypnosis. Where do you get it? You go to paulcloughonline.com forward slash podcast and get those 45 plus tracks of hypnosis. Have fun with them and make a difference to you. Make a difference to the world. Okay, see you soon. Warning, you are now leaving the unplugged mind of Paul Clough. It's time to fly on your own. Be brave, my friend. Personal Development Unplugged.